to look at an example problem using our kinematics equations. Um, but before we start this, let's talk a little bit about how we approach a problem like this. This one's pretty easy, hopefully. Uh, but there are certain techniques we want to use on all our problems to practice for the harder ones. And one of the techniques is to assign the variables. And so you read the problem, and whenever there's a number or a statement about something, see if you can assign one of our kinematics variables. And so 20 meter per second comes up, and so that is the initial velocity of the car. And so to assign that, I just write out V0 is 20 meters per second. Then there's another velocity, 30 meters per second. That's what we sped up to. That's our final velocity, or at least the velocity at the time we're interested in. And then that happened in two seconds. And so T is two seconds. Uh, another variable we can assign that usually is what we do, and that is our initial position. And so almost always we set that equal to zero. Sometimes I'll leave that step out, but it can be helpful. Then they ask us questions, and so we can assign uh, our question to a variable. And so they're asking for what is the acceleration, and then how far did it travel, and so that would be my final position. And so I know those are the things I'm trying to find out. Uh, it's a good idea to practice writing out our kinematics equations, and then you'll just learn them, and you won't have to sit there trying to memorize them. And so I know I have a position equation, and I know this is my initial position plus velocity times the time, initial velocity times the time, plus one-half at squared. Now this has my unknown in it, acceleration. Uh, it has time in it, and it's got initial velocity, um, but I don't know my final position. And so I can't solve for acceleration using this equation, at least not directly, because there are two unknowns in it, acceleration and final position. Another equation, which you may have already thought of, would be this, our velocity equation. And look, it's got everything we're given in it and one unknown, the acceleration. And so this looks like the equation to use here. Uh, real quickly, though, the other two equations that you might need, average velocity, change in position over time, or the average velocity, v0 plus v over 2. And so those are the four equations that will solve any problem I give you. And so this looks like the one to use here for the first unknown, but another technique is to solve this for the variable in question. We saw how that helped with the magic b problem and that will help you with other hard problems. Uh, so do it on the easy ones to learn the technique. And so now I'm ready to put in my numbers. And so this is my final velocity, 30. And this is my initial velocity, 20. And then the time was 2. And so I get 10 meters per second over 2 seconds or 5 meters per second per second, or if you like, 5 meters per second squared. And so the acceleration is a positive 5 meter per second squared. How about our next question? How far did it go? Well, now that I know the acceleration, I could use this equation here. That's not a bad idea, and it's already solved for my unknown. So I started at 0. My initial velocity is 20. The time was 2 plus 1 half. Now I know the acceleration times the time squared. And so that comes out to be a distance of 50 meters. Now there are other ways to do this. I could use my average velocity equation. Average velocity times the time is my change in position. And so I know the time, but what about the average velocity? Well, I can get that from the other average velocity equation. And so that is v0 plus v over 2 
or 50 over 2 or 25 meters per second. That's my average. If I start at 20, end up at 30. And so 25 meters per second times 2 seconds, 50 meters. Works out to be the same uh, distance. And if you want a third way of doing it, which you probably don't, but here it goes. I could use this one we created by combining equations, uh, these uh, two of these equations, and again, solve it for the um, unknown. And so x minus x0 is v squared minus v0 squared over 2a. And if you try that one out, you're going to see that also gives you 50 meters. Uh, real quick, let's revisit this first one. There was a homework problem, uh, and you can see how assigning the variables would help with this. In the homework problem, uh, you started out going 20 meters per second or something like that. And then the final velocity was 30 meters per second in the other direction or something like that. And so if this is positive 20, if I'm going in the other direction, that would be negative 30 meters per second. And so if we want the acceleration here, we take this equation, solve for the acceleration. And so it's negative 30 minus 20 over 2. So you get negative 50 meters per second over 2 seconds. And so the acceleration is quite a bit higher because it's not the same thing. Going, speeding up from 20 to 30 is um, not that extreme as going from 20, slamming on the brakes, and then going backwards, negative 30. Much more extreme situation. Think in terms of money. If velocity is money here, I walked in the casino with $20, and I left with 30, I gained $10. That was my change in velocity. Here I walked into the casino with $20, and I left broke and only owing my friend $30. So you wouldn't have any trouble saying, hey, I lost $50. You lost 50 meters per second of velocity.